African Institute for Economic Development and Planning, tailor made course on policy and legislation for the operation of road corridors in the censored area, including climate and gender aspects. Module one policy and legislation harmonization for the operation of road corridors. Content, censored at a glance, censored corridor network, continental regulatory environment, laws governing corridor operation in the censored area, membership, in more than one REC's issues, need to harmonize corridor operation policies and legislation, corridor management in the censored area and development prospects. Conclusion. Censored at a glance. Established on February 4, 1998, founding members these countries, Libya, Mali, Niger, Sudan, Chad, and Burkina Faso. Recognized as a regional economic community, REC, during the 36th ordinary session of heads of state and government of the Organization of African Unity in July 2000, in Lume, Togo. Observer status in the UN General Assembly under UN General Assembly Resolution Number A, RES 5692. Censored at a glance continued. Censored objective. Remove barriers to the unity of its member states facilitate the free movement of persons, strengthen and improve land, air and sea transport. Censored is currently comprised of 25 states and each of these states is a member of one of the following RECs, ECOWAS, ECCAS, COMESA, AMU, IGAD. The ARII, that is Africa Regional Integration Index, notes that the level of integration within censored is low, with an average of only 0 0.541. Like ECOWAS and SADIS SADC in the censored area, Productive and infrastructure integration is poorly addressed, contrary to the free movement of people, which is satisfactory. The ARII assesses regional integration in the censored through five dimensions. These dimensions combine 16 indicators to determine how well censored member countries are integrated into their region. The graph shows that the more a dimension is pulled outward, the more integrated the continent is with respect to that dimension. The scores are based on a scale ranging from zero, no integration, to one, full integration. So where we have the purple color on the graph, it shows business integration, the green productive integration, the red macroeconomic integration, the light green infrastructure integration, and the yellow free movement of persons. Censored Corridors Network. Censored road corridors are sections or sections of continent and African highways that, is TA, that make up the TAH countries' territories. In addition to this TAH, 
the following regional corridors should be considered. Abidjan to Lagos, Dakar to Lagos, Tema to Ogadu, Abidjan to Ogadu, Bamako to Dakar, Bamako, Abidjan to Niamey, Abidjan to Bamako, Kotonou to Niamey, Lome to Ugadugu, Accra to Ugadu. The map of Africa that is showing trans African highways. The blue line shows the major ports. We have the national capital. The red line shows TAH01, Cairo to Dakar. The purple line shows TAH02, Algiers to Lagos. The green line shows TAH03, Tripoli to Windhoek to Cape Town. The next line, the blue line to a lighter shade of blue shows TAH04, Cairo to Gaborume to Cape Town. The, this deep blue shows TAH05, Dakar to Ndamena. The yellow line TAH06, Ndamena to Djibouti. The pink line TAH07, Dakar to Lagos. The fuchsia pink TH08, Lagos to Mombasa. The wine line TH09, Beira to Lobito. The bright yellow line TH10, Labroville to Djibouti. All crisscrossing across the map of Africa. Laws governing corridor operation in the censored areas. TAH section crossing censored member states. Trans-African Highway 1, TH1, Cairo to Dakar, 8,636 kilometers. Trans-African Highway 2, TH2, Algiers to Lagos, 4,504 kilometers. Trans-African Highway 3, that's TH3, Tripoli to Cape Town, 10,808 kilometers. Trans-African Highway 4, TH4, Cairo to Cape Town, 10,228. Trans-African Highway 5, TH5, Dakar to Ndamena, 4,496 kilometers. Trans-African Highway 6, TH6, Ndamena to Djibouti, 4,219 kilometers. Trans-African Highway 7, TH7, Dakar to Lagos, 4,010 kilometers. Trans-African Highway 8, TAH, Lagos to Mombasa, 6,259 kilometers. Trans-African Highway 9, TAH9, Beira to Lobito. Trans-African Highway 10, TAH10, Libreville to Djibouti. environment, continental regulatory environment, TAH history, 1971, Office of the Trans-African Highways Network established within the ECA in 1980, establishment of the Lagos Mombasa Highway Authority by ECA, end of 1980, efforts by ECA to revive the TAH office and the authorities. TAH difficulties. One, lack of support from member states. Two, cost of operation. Three, tasks not clearly defined. Continental regulatory environment continues. In 2011, intergovernmental agreement on the TAH initiated by the ministers of transport in Lusaka. In 2014, approval of the agreement by the heads of state in Malabo. Agreement still not in force. 
15 ratifications required. 2002, launch NEPAD Short-Term Action Plan, PACT, PACT, to implement 120 projects in four sectors, in energy, ICT, transport, and cross-border water resource management. Continental Regulatory Environment Continued, Role of NEPAD to encourage political will and action, facilitate resource mobilization, facilitate knowledge sharing and dissemination of good practices among countries, RECs, and technical agencies. Example of the PIDA, implementation is based on coordinated action by all actors at all levels of the African development process. IAIDA, IAIDA based process. The IIP implementation strategy. Continental entities include CUA, NPDA. Situation in Africa. The graph shows the intra regional trade in RECs in billion dollars. In less than five, we have the CAE. In less than zero, less than more than zero and less than five, we have CEEAC. In 10, we have CEDEAO. In a little above 15, but less than 20, we have censored. In 10, in a little short of 10, we have COMESA. In a little above zero, but not of five, we have IGAD. In a little above zero, but still not of five, we have UMA. And um, in a little above 30, but not yet 35, we have SADC. This file chart still shows situation in Africa. We have SADC having 20%, CAE 11%, CEEAC 4%, CEDEA 13%, CENSAD 14%, COMESA 14%. IGAD 12%, UMA 12%. Continental regulatory environment, an investment of $32 billion in improving and maintaining Africa's road network would increase trade flows by $250 billion. PIDA, an integrated continent where transport infrastructure and services allow free movement. Against this backdrop, Censor has listed a number of actions concerning road and rail infrastructures as follows. Laws governing corridor operations in the censored area. Tests governing these different corridors. Treaties, multilateral agreements, memoranda of understanding, company incorporation or registration deeds. A corridor management entity addresses the problem, that is, operational procedures should have the necessary flexibility to respond to emerging situations. Corridor issues involve many government entities. Thus, participatory processes 
should be encouraged. Laws governing corridor operation in the censored area continue. Operational procedures and organizational structure should emphasize the idea of ownership and power sharing. The organizational structure must ensure that the public and private sectors interact at all levels. Membership in more than one REC. At a time when large economies are establishing global entities to become economically more powerful, diagnosis in Africa shows trends for balkanization. Yet, in 1991, Africa was the first continent in the world to establish an African Economic Community, AEC, to bring together all states. While the RECs do not have the same mandate and objective, the Abuja Treaty of June 3rd, 1991, whose objective is the creation of a single economic community, assigns them the mission of working to get towards the creation of a regional customs union. While urging to coordination and harmonization among member countries and with the African Union Commission, the seventh ordinary summit of the African Union held in Banjo, June 20, 2006, decided to consider the following eight RECs, RECs, ECOWAS, COMESA, ECCAS, SADC, IGAD, UMA, CENSA, CAE. This harmonization process has not started in all RECs. The RECs involved should work to harmonize their relevant regulations. The new context of the ZLECAF makes it necessary and urgent to pursue and fast track this harmonization work. Indeed, a framework for collaboration has just been established between the ZLECAF Secretariat and the RECs. The inaugural session was held on 20th September 2021 in Accra. Need to harmonize corridor operation policies and legislation. A corridor management structure is a partnership between public and private stakeholders in the corridor member countries. Corridor management groups or committees are advisory bodies set up to facilitate transit. The scope of each legal instrument depends to a large extent on the subject matter and the choice of legal instruments. This choice, influenced by key partners, is one in fundamental to ensuring the effectiveness of the corridors and management groups. Two, is useful in determining the cost of setting up corridors, management, corridors management mechanisms. And three, depends on the desired level of interaction between public and private sector stakeholders. There are two approaches to managing corridors. The first is to use the same legal instruments to create a corridor and a corridor management committee, CMC. The second uses a different instrument to create the CMC for an existing corridor. Several legal frameworks have been used to create the CMC. They include Memorandum of Understanding, Not-for-Profit Corporation, Incorporation, Memorandum of Understanding slash Multilateral Ag Government Agreement, Management Committee under a Board of Directors, 
and supervised by an organization of the REC. The MOU is the most frequently used legal instrument or framework for the creation of CMCs. The success or failure of a CMC in achieving its objectives does not necessarily depend on the legal framework, but rather on its mandate, structure, and institutional mechanism. Key elements for the successful development and operation of a corridor and the setting up of a CMC include the need for the establishment of a single organization, the firm support of the political public sector and the market private sector, two, an organization focused on stakeholders' efforts and the setting up of a focal point. Need to involve the major actors in the public and private sector or civil society. A clear mandate beyond the advocacy framework alone for the CMC and role definition. Need to identify and mobilize corridor leaders. Need to mobilize donor funding. Use of simple, similarly binding legal framework. Need to focus on just a few strategic points at a time. Need for stakeholders to adopt a broad vision and to display a willingness to deal with multiple cross-border problems and non-tariff barriers. Need to bring tangible benefits to corridor users. Need to adopt at a later stage in the development of the corridor, the user pay system. Regional level, including the AUC and the REC secretariat, responsible for defining continental slash regional corridor policies, harmonization and coordination, advisory services, information repositories, and dissemination services. Corridor level. This level consists of three bodies, the Committee of Ministers, the Executive Management Committee, and the Secretariat. National level. It consists of a corridor management committee bringing together the relevant public and private sector or civil society stakeholders. Development prospects and corridor management. There are a number of key strategic points at the regional level that need to be addressed and clearly defined for each corridor, particularly when it comes to multimodal corridors for the ICDGC effectiveness. It is essential to clearly define and allocate responsibilities for corridor development and maintenance when shared between the ICDG, DGC, and state owner of the corridor. To be effective, the ICDGC needs a reasonable level of autonomy that reflects a delicate balance between the national interests of the state owners of the corridor and regional needs. Development, prospect, and corridor management. Infrastructure, trade facilitation, slash ICT slash STI, adoption of adequate measures for maritime safety and security, legal or regulatory issues, economic or financial issues. Thank you for your kind attention.